Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Manuel Bastian and today we're going to talk about treble boosters. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, yeah, treble boosters. Um, one of my favorite sounds out there. I mean, I grew up listening to Deep Purple. Um, Richie Blackmore is one of my all-time heroes. Uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I didn't come across treble boosters uh, like nobody I knew back then uh, played a treble booster or like even owned one um, so my my first endeavor with treble boosters is uh, this thing um, it's a DS Texas Ranger um, yeah, uh, strange, you know, I, uh, like Stevie Ray Vaughan got me into playing guitar back then when I was 11 and heard uh, Couldn't Stand the Weather for the first time. Um, yeah, then when I saw this pedal uh, on the internet by Cesar Diaz um, and I've read that it's a treble booster um, yeah copied from the range master um, I knew I had to give this a try um, so when my when my sister uh, my sister Michi, hello Michi. Um, when she came back from the States, um, she uh, brought me this. Um, yeah. 
I'm forever thankful because, um, yeah, if I hadn't played this, uh, this thing, my sound philosophy would be a whole different story probably. Um, because this really changed my mind and how I approach sounds, amps. Yeah, this uh, really opened up another dimension. Um, yeah. So, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Thomas Pluke visited me to check out my M collection and um, yeah, I was back at his place for Academy of Tone. Uh, yeah, which I'm still really, really thankful. Thomas, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, it was a great day. And uh, when, uh, when Thomas called me and uh, yeah, he asked if, uh, if uh, I wanted I wanted him to to bring anything you know like pedals or anything, and uh, I remember that he had a a real Dallas Rangemaster treble booster. Um, <laughs> I saw a video where where he actually used it as a stand for the M1. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Was da drüben. Das, war okay. das habe ich schon die ganze Zeit drauf gewartet. So, jetzt haben wir es. Das praktische Display. Aber dazu auch noch, halt mal gerade ganz kurz. Das ist das optische, ein Original Range Master aus den 60er Jahren. Ach, das ist unser, unser M1 Ständer hier. Ganz genau, das ist mindestens so viel wert wie der M1 selbst. Ist ein Nobel, Nobel geht die Welt zugrunde. Das Ding wackelt auch. Um, when he asked me if uh, he should bring anything, I knew... Uh, I wanted to give the the ranch master a try, so because I never I never played a real one, and oh, they are so hard to come by nowadays. And like if you see one online, they're going for tons of money. So yeah, he actually brought me his ranch master, uh, for which I'm really really thankful. Um, so. The sound you heard in the in the beginning of the video was the Blue Guitar M1 on the Vintage Channel, and uh, yeah, not, like not even with the power amp cranked, but you know it's a good good rock sound, you know, plexi sound. So, um, what does it sound like with a range master? Let me change cables real quick. Here's what the the amp one on the vintage channel sounds like with a range master. <laughs> Right away you hear this quack quack quack, the, the, this nasally squawk in the tone, you know, for uh, lack of a better word. And right away, uh, yeah, I have to think of Brian May, you know. Like, even even uh, it's a it's a plexi sound I'm playing, but you know that nasal character. And you know it's a germanium diode. Is it a diode? It's a germanium boost. So. Um, it 
kind of does the same um, the same as a, a, a fuzz phase, you know? Like, when you roll back the volume just a little bit. You get those super... Those super classy... Those super classy sounds, you know, it doesn't lose, it doesn't lose treble when you roll back. Uh, it actually, you actually gain treble by rolling back the volume. Listen how trebly the sound is um, on the neck pickup. And then when you turn it up, It gets fat, juicy, mid-heavy. Um, a good example is... I, uh, I used to play in a Deep Purple tribute and we uh, played... Um So you get those classy, almost bluesy kind of sounds, but then when you take a solo, you just roll it up a little bit more. Here's the class. And for solo, So for me, it's a great sound, it's dynamic, you know, like you can express yourself in ways a simple overdrive won't give you, you know, like that class thing and then the mid heavy, like, and all the shades in between, you know, I like, I can, get, I can get really thin sounds. Like really thin and classy. So, the question is, why aren't there a lot more people playing treble boosters? Um, you know, people asked me like way back, um, what, 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 how I get my sound, you know? And I told them, ah, oh, I, I play treble boosters. And um, some of them got themselves a treble booster and then uh, 
said, ah, oh, it's so harsh, it's, you know, it's, it's not my sound, I don't like it, it's, I don't know how you can play with such a tone. And there are a lot of, not a lot of, but there are mistakes uh, you have to watch out. You know, it's, a, it's an old circuit and it's a, a very simple circuit. And um, yeah, there's stuff you can screw up. For example, um, let's go for a clean sound. Like a really, 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 really clean sound. Uh, and I'm gonna switch to my Fender Bandmaster reverb for that. So let me just fiddle with the knobs and yeah, get a really, really clean, a really clean sound. So now that's really clean. Now that's really clean. So what happens? If you switch in Ew. the treble booster, it just gets really fucking loud and really hard. No, like you get those. It gets. It's not a pleasant sound, you know. It actually with <laughs> with this old Fender, it doesn't even sound that bad. But let me try to get it even cleaner. Like I rolled back the volume a bit more. Yeah, and now this is what the treble booster does, you know. Let me switch it off. You know, that's, that's not even a sound right there. No. So a lot of people imagine it's, you know, like a, like an overdrive pedal or a distortion pedal, like you turn it on for the, for the distorted parts only. And they, you know, they, they get their clean sound. And they kick in the treble boost and then it gives them this. And it's a huge volume jump. It sounds harsh, you know, and then they, yeah, they don't like it. You know, I wouldn't. It's not the best sound in the world. Uh, but um, the reason is you're supposed to play a treble booster in front of an already overdriven amp you know like when you crank the amp to the sweet spot you know let's let's try it with a fender even um yeah really clean not even close to the sweet spot of the amp let's put it to about yeah that's about seven ish Oh, let's see what we got here. 
You know, it gets into overdrive territory. It's not really overdriven, but let's kick in the treble boost, see what we got. Okay, Fender with treble boost. I mean, that sounds killer, you know, with a Fender amp. <laughs> Let me turn it off. You know, Thomas told me that the, the bypass is really sketchy <laughs> on these old units. Um, yeah, but... I mean, that's a, a killer blues tone, you know? Oh. And like, what do you do when you need a clean tone? You just turn the volume back. Oh. I mean, come on. I mean, I don't think they use the treble boost, but to me, it sounds 
old and vintage instantly, you know, it just gets this that nasally quality, you know. when you turn it up. So, um, so let's, uh, let's repeat, uh, we won't play treble boosters into totally clean amps, you know, uh, just crank the amp up, hit it with a treble boost and everything's gonna be okay. Um, let's try it with the AC30. Um, right now, I'm plugged into the, into the top boost channel of the AC30. Um, it actually has a lot of treble, you know, like AC30 has the best treble of all the amps out there if you ask me but they didn't always come with a top boost channel um, the old AC30s you had to plug there, there was only the, the, the normal channel the brilliant channel um, but they all sounded pretty dull if you if you turn them up so, here's the normal channel of the AC30, totally cranked, it sounds like this. Let me check, Let's see if... Is that the normal channel? Yeah, that's the normal channel. Okay. And it's... Let me see if the pot is working all the way. Yeah, so this is all you get from an AC30 normal channel, you know? It sounds pretty woolly and mushy and you know it doesn't sound like Queen at all. So Brian May and also um, Rory Gallagher they used a range master to get uh, the amp to kick the amp into overdrive and get rid of those bass frequencies, you know. No, now it sounds... Let's uh, turn back the, the, the gain of the boost a little bit. 
Yeah, sounds even better. about halfway. And as you can hear, it's not almost it's it, it's not always good to crank the amp all the way because now it gets really so it sounded a lot better. It sounded a lot better when I uh, when I decreased the boost on the on the travel booster. Let's uh, try and decrease the the volume on the amp. That's about uh, yeah maybe two o'clock on the gain. Sounds like this. So now the amp isn't cooking as hard as before, but the boost still, you know, kicks its butt. Yeah, and when you turn back, That's always been my, my favorite mistake on any record. Um, when he hits the G, the G chord in Fat Bottom Girls, uh, but you know, the E string is dropped and it goes something like.
You know, for some reason, I like my AC30, my AC30 better in the in the top boost channel, even with the treble boost. You know, um, but I guess it's a it's a, a different um, a different schematic. You know, like even when you ah oh man, it's so hard. Oh. Those AC thirties, they get so freaking hard. Oh, 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 oh. Burns my hand turning those knobs. So, top boost channel. <laughs> basically gives you like a channel switch on your volume pot, you know. So cool. So, um, we had one rule, uh, you don't play treble boosters into totally clean amps. Um, second rule is, it's an always on pedal, you won't turn it off, you know, and like as you can see on the, on the old Range Master, it doesn't even have a foot switch, you know, it just has this on off switch on the front, um, like you wouldn't run back to your amp and uh, switch it to the on position uh, when you play a solo. You, know, you, you wouldn't do that. So, yeah, basically you would leave it on. And yeah, let's hear it with a with a Plexi, with a JTM50. Um, yeah, uh, good point. Let's, that's actually the way, that, like I didn't check the sound of, of the amp like before I uh, put the treble booster in, so it's uh, probably way too bright. Yeah. It's so bright it oscillates, you know. Too much gain, too bright. So, um, 
the way to do it is actually, you know, turn on the, like, plug your guitar into the treble boost, treble boost into the amp, and then you uh, fiddle with the knobs and get your sound, you know, because the, the treble booster is part of your sound now. You won't ever turn it off. So now this is kind of harsh. Let's go for like everything in the middle. Let's crank the volume. So now the volume is at yeah, 3 o'clock, treble is at 6, yeah, so uh, volume at 8, treble at 6, uh, middle 7, bass at 5, presence at 5. And this is what we get. <laughs> So, usually I have the bass completely off with this amp. Um, let's try it at three. Because the treble booster actually cuts bass, you know. That's a glorious clean sound right there. Turn it up. Let's reduce the treble, crank the gain a little bit.
and there you have those crazy Blackmore cleans, you know. Yeah, so that's the Plexi. Uh, yeah, everything sounds just authentic. But my favorite sound with a treble booster has always been in front of a JCM 800 2204. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm sitting right in front of a, of a cranked amp it hits a power soak before it hits the, the cabinet, so it's it's really, really cranked. And uh, yeah, that can happen when you uh, play a treble booster in front of it. Yeah, but, yeah, man, that's my favorite sound with the treble boost, because like the JCM 800 is my, my heaviest amp, you know, I don't have a, I don't know, like a 5150 or a rectifier in my collection. So in order to uh, get more gain, I just boost it with a treble booster and you know, like those, like the Fender, the, the AC30 and the Plexi, they all tend to get a little mushy if you push them too hard, you know, in, in the bass. But that's why I like the, the 2204 and 2203s. They stay clean in the bass and, you know, it's you know, they don't, they don't get like over compressed in the bass end, so. Try to think of a song. Um, um, you're invited, but your friends can't come. Was it called that? Was it called? I think it's called You're Invited, But Your Friends Can't Come by uh, Wins Neal of Motley Crue. Um, <laughs>
like even on the neck pickup when you play fast runs. You get this definition. And that's tons of gain, you know, like if you if you double that, like pen it hard hard left, hard right, it will push your back to the wall, you know. What can I say? Uh, that's my sound right there. Um, and with this amp, um, yeah, let me get a let me get a different guitar. Now let's get something with uh, humbuckers. Let me tune it real quick. Turn down the gain a little bit. Crank the treble. Presence. Yeah, the feedback will go away if you So now I'm uh, now I'm not sitting in front of the end. So Yeah, so even with humbuckers, you know, although I like treble boosters the best with uh, single coils, but yeah, even with humbucker guitars, it sounds awesome, you know. Um, Tony Iommi used a Range Master as well, so here's my my SG P90s. Let's check it with the Plexi. Let's reduce the gain. Crank up the treble. Yeah, 
let's turn down the presence. Let's try. Sounds great. Let's crank the gain a little bit. And go for a little heaven and hell.
You know, it's not the right amp for Black Sabbath, but... Close enough, you know. I don't know if it's the right key or if it's even how it's played, but... Yeah. Um, I mean... Range Master. Uh, tons of classic sound in this little box, you know? because back then it was, I don't know which one came first, the, the treble booster or the tone bender, but back then you didn't have that many options to, to kick your amp into overdrive, you know? Um, so yeah, a lot of people used those early and simple circuits, you know, to kick their amp into overdrive. and. You know, that's, uh, that's why it sounds so classic, because tons of stuff was recorded uh, with those boxes. Um, so, to reiterate, um, if you want a good sound with a treble booster, Play it in front of an overdriven amp. Uh, second, don't turn it off. It's an always on pedal. Just leave it on and do your clean sounds with your volume pots. Um, third rule, really, really important. Your guitar needs to go directly into the treble booster. I mean, it needs to be connected to your guitar pickups. That's key because um, if you plug uh, a buffered a buffered signal into into a treble booster or into a fuzz phase, you know, into uh, like germanium circuits, um, yeah, those boxes won't be happy. You know, it will sound harsh. Uh, in fact, I can show you. I have a little, um, a little boss equalizer. Um, you know, doesn't matter how I set it. I don't even have to turn it on um, because um, it's a buffered pedal. It's 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 uh, it's always on. You know, the buffer is always on. So. Um, Here's the treble booster, guitar straight in. So now let's put a buffer in front of it by 
connecting the the boss pedal and turning it off. Can you hear how it sounds harsh and not at all how it used to sound with a guitar um, connected directly? And the pedal is off, by the way, you know? Yeah, that's what a buffer does in front of your travel booster. Um, that's why um, Brian May, um, you know, he, uh, when you play with a, uh, when you, wireless yeah let's call it wireless when you play uh, with the wireless system um, your guitar goes into the transmitter and then into the receiver and once it comes out of the receiver it's a buffered signal so you know um, when you want to play with a wireless you have to go into the treble booster first and that's what I've done actually uh, just the same as uh, Brian May, you know, he uh, he puts his treble booster on the guitar strap and uh, just leaves it on the strap and then goes guitar, treble booster, wireless, you know, then it works, but uh, not the other way around. So now I'm connected to the treble booster directly again and... <laughs> So now it sounds fat and juicy again. Yeah, and when you have a, a guitar with two uh, volume knobs, like you can get your clean sound on the neck pickup. Let's, let's go for some bad company, you know? If I remember it. Neck pickup clean sound. And bridge lead sound. Yeah. So, once more, don't use a treble booster in front of a clean amp. Second rule, 
it's an always on pedal, don't turn it off. Tweak your amp to sound good with the treble booster engaged. And three, no buffers in front of the treble boost. And then you're gonna be a happy man. You're gonna have tons of nuances. Like, you know, all over the, the volume part. Yeah, guys, um, once again, a huge thank you to Thomas for uh, lending me this thing. Uh, I'm gonna do another video where I compare it to my other treble boosts. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is a long video as it is. Um, but, guys, I hope you liked it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, like, subscribe, and yeah, if you want to buy me a taco, uh, click the PayPal link below. Um, yeah, and send me over a dollar or anything you want, you know. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you like my videos. If you don't, uh, yeah, comment anyways, you know, tell me what I can do better. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, for subscribing, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.